Get your day started right. From our shack to yours, this is Coffee and Ham Radios. We are live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We are live! Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, and we're off to a good start. Doing well. Morning. We got Chuck on location. Um, let me just do a quick rundown. Today is the 28th of January, and it is Winter Field Day, so it I don't is. know what uh, it's going to look like in the chat. But if you do have Winter Field Day plans or you're planning to do something, let us know, and uh, we can have folks keep an ear out for you. Today we're going to talk a little bit about interference in your ham shack, whether it's EMI, common mode current, or uh, RFI, uh, RF interference. We're going to cover all that stuff, but uh, I think we have a couple of updates and around the horn stuff we want to do first. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get Chuck in first. He's, he's on his way back from Quartz Fest. We covered it last weekend. And last in, first I don't know. I don't know if anybody heard, but he built this amazing antenna and, and made contact with Hayden. You want, to, you, want to tell, you want to tell us all about it, Chuck? Well, I, 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 you know, you guys know the Moxon, but uh, I've always wanted to do a, a hex no beam, bingo. you know, a, a full size, you know, more full size. I've done the small ones. Right. So I, I, about uh, shoot two or three months about two months ago i started the project kind of you know a little bit here a little bit there and i already had the i already had the uh the octagon i guess they call it yeah well, it. you you were printing 3d parts for that for a while right and always I talking did. about it and i have to say all my parts that i printed worked really well i don't oh, like nice. i don't like the way i have to set it up because i can't leave any of the parts on there you know what i mean because they, yeah. they all they all there's a fishing poles and they all go inside of each other and, and i i'll say it's probably under eight pounds total no problem the, that, that, whole, that whole that whole antenna yeah because the fishing poles but you know you know a seven meter pole and i'm only using half of those half of them i use the bottom half because so, they're stronger Mox but uh Next. actually i got I, I actually got one of the guys i made a contact he's a uh, he might have been in colorado said that he made contact with me over there on one of my videos and uh it was it was doing great now i wish i could share a, a couple of screens with you guys but i don't it's on my phone right now but i'm trying to get a co i have a copy it, of the of the antenna with you putting it up i'm trying to get to get it pulled up so well, i can talk about it i was talking about the screen for today's show because you should have seen the noise on that little elad screen man holy cow Oh yeah, it was. A it, it was kind of scary at times with, with the signals out there. Well, I bet because you probably have everybody's got all these RF generating mm -hmm. devices like generators and heater, Mister Buddy heaters, and all that other stuff, right? Yeah, and, and I, I do think on twenty. I noticed this in Hawaii when I was on twenty. I was near a naval base, and every so often something went and just took the whole band out. And same thing happens That's out there. Right. You don't same thing out that. there, and Nothing I think there's a. Uh, yeah, see, Chuck's wearing his pants gangster style. Look at that. Well, he's from Oakland. You know what I'm saying? Sagging, man. Look Oakland, at that, Charles. That's the way you wear him. Doesn't have his hat on the right way, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why uh, the pole, the pole, the pole I'm using is a uh, just a flagpole off of Amazon. It does 25 feet. I'm gonna have to. I don't. I'm not trusting it too well with the friction. You know how you twist it and it's a lot. Yeah. So I'm gonna, right. Kevin and I were Kevin and I were talking about that. And we're gonna. I'm gonna pin everything. But um, the difference in force, of course, it was really windy this this trip compared to last trip, and I and I didn't see um, how bad the, the one night that we had wind last year, how bad it was actually been in my pole the pole because of the I think I actually lowered it, but this thing had way more wind, wind resistance than the Moxon, so. But yeah, I'm sure it, it had more drag, right? That's what you're saying. It, it sure does. It was just been in that pole, and that pole hardly bends much, but. Uh, I mean, that looks legit, man. That looks like a, when I, I'm not trying to start drama or anything like that, but that, I mean, that looks more advanced than the Buddy Hex. This is, uh, it's not as horrible as the Buddy Hex because I can't leave. You guys can see the wires, right? Yeah. I have to slip, I have to slip six for, if I put six bands up, I have six things I have to slip on. And unfortunately the, the, these, these, uh, fishing poles that I got are not all the same. They're all the same when they're closed, but when you open them up, the joints are in different places, so they don't always fit because you know they're all different sizes. Right. Um, but they do make it really light. I bet you it's, it may be actually lighter than the Buddy Hex because 
the poles they use are a little, they use a kind of like a tent pole. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, looking at that thing, that thing looks massive to me. I mean, it, it could is. always be a goofy camera angle or something like that, but I mean, that the thing angles. looks like a big ass antenna. Also, the. It's great um, on Tinder, I'm, not so great when it shows up in your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you the truth. At night. Um, the guy I bought the ELED from watched my video. He's been thinking about a box, and then he's going to build the box and just for the fact that it's. It's not as wide all the way around, and the, right. it, it happens to work the direction he wants to point it is perfect for him. So, so you, what you do here is you're going to get a good old grip on this thing, and you're going to lift it up and then put it on that tripod. No, no, I I build it the the, no, no. the very top section where the top of the pole is sets on there to build it on the ground. Uh -huh. I put it on here, and I've got a bolt that bolts it to the pole, and then on my trailer I've got a receiver, like a pipe that I slide it through. Uh, okay, so you you don't have anything to do with this with this uh, tripod here. That's just there for just to build assembly. It. So it's, it's, a, it's an assembly jig. I, there's no way I could build it as high as it is right now. And gotcha. That's how high I had to have it this high to actually when I put it in the trailer mount. Mm. That's not hit. That's not hitting the trailer. Well, because I'm gonna say, I mean, you probably blow out your O-ring picking that up and moving it around a little bit. It's, you know it's not saying? very heavy. It's really not very heavy. But you get put foot pounds and stuff like that when you're looking at that, right? Yeah, Jason. Um, I'm going to have a video on it. I'll show all the parts yeah, it's and be fun. where I get all the information. I, I filmed it there. That's going to be my course fest. So when do I do course fest, wouldn't give me a, a ton of views, so the, but the, I'm pretty sure the antenna build will. Yeah, the antenna build will definitely blow you out there. Are you thinking that it's going to be cheaper for me to fly out to Chuck's house and assemble <laughs> Chuck's antenna or cheaper for me to build my own? Uh, I don't know. Well, that, you know, I don't, have a, I don't have a lot of money in this thing. I, the, at the poles were six poles at seven or eight bucks a piece, but what I, I actually recommend probably buying the seven meter poles from like DX uh, Commander. Yeah. I, I tried to keep it cheap, something easy to get off of Amazon, you know, here in the states. And I see, see my I've video got, that, I, that I'm not happy with the poles that I got. So. I have these Shakespeare Wonder poles um, that are like 21 feet long, so they're right around the seven seven meter mark, something mm -hmm. like that. They'd be good yeah. enough. Well, I got them. Oh, I got them for like uh, twenty bucks each on Amazon. They don't. I don't. I can't find them anymore. Uh oh. But I mean, maybe they still make them or not. They were crap. They're called crappy poles. But um, crappy poles, because that's a type of fish, not a swear. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. these are these are actually what they call tenkara. They're Japanese tenkara fishing yeah. um, fly rods. Is what they. T In fact. Kevin and Jason both looked at that. That looks like Japanese on there, but they're but they're not made in Japan. They're made in China. <laughs> they got Japanese writing on it. The Japanese people go, huh? Oh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks for sharing, Chuck. That, the, the uh, one other thing I'm going to do is um, I, what I didn't like about it because they're way bigger around. They're like an inch around at the bottom. I think it's. I think I'm getting more wind resistance than I could get by with, with like some tent poles or something. It was something that was not, not as tapered as those poles. Right? right. The ends are about the same size as the uh, buddy hex size. Well, and I can go cool. down and I can go down one more section. See, I just look like a big old spider web and get all tangled up in Haiti, hey, right? And uh, I, I would think that, um, like, I'm not sure I'm advanced enough to put something together like that. All those wires running everywhere. I think well, I this was to, this was the first time I put it together with that many. That is way too much fiddling. Right? I wouldn't do it on a day trip. Jim, this is yeah. like when I'm going to well, be Well, yeah, you're there for a week. Yeah. But I did only put it up for a day or so, like two now, is days. That, is that the tripod you mounted it on next to it? No. Was, did he just get here? Did yeah. he just get here? Okay. Yeah. No, I have a mount on my trailer. So oh, I have okay. a mount for okay. the box. The box I was, is mounted on I was thinking that's a lot of top heavy for that little tiny tripod. Yeah, so was Ape there for a minute. Yeah, like 10 minutes ago. Um, I was playing with my flex, maybe. I uh, don't <laughs> I didn't, yeah, yeah. He goes, "Why would New you Bingo want a Square. resident?" Kevin goes, "Why would you want a resident six meter antenna wire on there?" I'm like, "Because it's resident." Because you know, he was giving me a bad time. It does have six. Six is actually. He was on saying there. to ask you about the six. So what, what? What? What about it? So I had six, ten, and twenty on this weekend. That's all I got done before I got there because I couldn't work on it. This was the first time I ever set it up with more than just six meter on it. So when you talked to Hayden, you were on ten. Yeah, we were on ten. So um, that's that's for you, Jim. 
<laughs> and Jim's like, what? Are you talking to me? What are you talking about? I right? read the comments. He, he's been reading Apparently. comments, guys. Not listening. I'm reading comments. Well. All right. And so I had a great time. I met uh, uh, Kevin, Kevin and his wife, Chris, showed up. We had Bill from, uh, what was Bill's? It's Ham Radio Tectronics. Ham Radio Tectronics. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. And Bill's a great guy. He's He brought his, he, I won't say what he brought out, but he had a really, he had a really expensive uh, radio out there. Uh, Jason and Frank were there. Charlie was there. We met some people from. Uh, so I'm getting a glare. Huh? We met people from uh, the, that know most of us and stuff. You know, on the on the internet, YouTube stuff. So it was fun. It was a great time. Oh, bad man! It sounded like it was awesome. Again, it's uh, it's Winterfield Day. So if anybody has any Winterfield Day anecdotal stories that they would like to share in the chat, go ahead and post them in there. Um, yeah, Marty says he's are... going out with his FT eight ninety one and super antenna. Oh, how about that? None of you boys are doing anything, are you? Don't no. know, man. It's minus no. four here. I mean, I, I I talk to the Winterfield Day people when they go CQ CQ Winterfield Day. I'll be like, hey, yeah. Hey, how you like doing? I'm sitting here drinking hot chocolate in the warm shack. Yeah, that's up, right. <laughs> got got adult beverages right here with me, and the television, <laughs> getting, and the heater. getting drunk on corn liquor. That's right. Corn oh, liquor. so Abe, just this I had grits this morning, and it's booze this afternoon. I did. Harsh. I did test our antenna that you and I have been working on. Oh yeah, how did it? Yeah. Uh, how did it work uh, out? Um, it, it's weird. It was. It was actually. You know, 40 was, I was having a problem with 40, but 40 was totally usable according to the radio. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, and, and it's, you know, different ground too. But uh, it worked good. I, it wasn't real strong in the San Diego, but, and those guys were strong. So I think it's a little, it may not be quite as good on 40, but 10 is just like, 10 is like, uh, the whole band looks, it's like under 1.5. I mean, the whole band. <laughs> Sweet. It's That's weird. Awesome. I've never seen I've never seen one do that. Usually it's in the upper end, you know, on a half wave. Right, right. Let's see. Now James has got an exciting story. He doesn't want to be left out. Uh, after much trial and tribulation, he had a flex radio show up at his house yesterday. Is yeah, that right? I heard they done him dirty though. That's well, what I heard. <laughs> We're going to get to that. What, what's the story? Like they said that they were shipping a hat to you, and you, if you get the box, and there's no hat. Well, in oh yeah, there. Michael said he was going to going to chuck out a hat too. And if you if I looked at the order on the website, it had the radio and the hat, and I got the radio, but I, I got no hat. <laughs> and I don't so, care. I, I, well, the thing is, person, that you're but, supposed to be wearing your flex hat when you're operating your flex radio. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Well, no, I, I thought we might do a giveaway, or I'd randomly throw it to somebody at Hamcation. Because well, radio is a visual thing. When you go to the Walmart or you go to the to the Waffle House or something like that, the right. Stuckies, whatever, and you walk in and you don't have a flex radio hat on, how are people going to know? Well, I, I mean, it's it, a symbol it could, of authority, right? It could be it could be advertisement that I'm looking for a flexible meth chick. I, I don't know. You know, I think it could be misconstrued at the Waffle House is what I'm saying. Shakey's I don't pizza. know. But Rod, Rod is saying his hat came separate. And so I, yeah, it wasn't in a box, and I, oh, I figured they'd send it separately. Right. So All radio, no hat. <laughs> I'd rather, uh, between the two things, Big I'm hat, no glad paddle. the radio came. If the hat never shows up, I'm saying. You know, but like the radio is nice. Now, Ape, y'all, Ape gave me crap from day one about it. That radio so old, they discontinued it twice. <laughs> Whatever. We're right. <laughs> Whatever. Well, didn't Michael say he actually liked that one, that version also? Yeah. Yeah. And I, he also said something about there's not a whole lot of difference except um, the form factor. And a few other well, come on, son, share a screen like you were earlier and see what yeah, we got no, going. It's gone. I, no, I'm not sharing it. But uh, Nobody's going to laugh at your own experience oh, with the interface. You are going to mock me because that's how you do <laughs> all the time. <laughs> this is Maybe Coffee and Ham like. Radios. We're a very inclusive group. You we mock everybody oh, equally. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, hold on. I'm not, uh, I'm not radio. You're not technically savvy? I'm binary radio. First time you ever been on a computer? No, I want to make sure I don't share them pictures of your ma. Oh. Hey, look, there's all of us. That'd be scary. Hi, me. So I got I got FT8 going right now. I'm still. This is a really nice waterfall on this thing. Smooth as butter. Butter. And um, spread that butter. I was, I was noticing it's almost as smooth as a 991. It doesn't almost. drift though, like the 991. So the FT8 piece, which is what I'm playing with right now, this looks exactly like the SDR control software that I think 
we've done i don't know between us all three or four videos on it. yeah yeah it looks just like it yeah it's it the same guy wrote it marcus roskosh rokosh roskosh i can't remember how he says his last name and this is the official mac client for flex radio this um costs 150 bucks the windows one you can get for free that's how they get you that's how they get you but um uh, but it's pretty swank a lot of it is really this looks the same as sdr control this piece here and the ft8 window same as sdr control basically you get your spots this uploads to psk reporter it puts in all the data it gets from psk reporter and then um there's a whole lot to this i, I haven't figured out yet i'm gonna i'm gonna have to read the documentation later nah, um, we're gonna play with it on nuggets yeah yeah we could son this is like three or four nuggets episodes so and this it looks a little different between the windows and the mac version but you can um this is your power tuning um then you have different profiles that you can pick for what you're trying to do for your transmit profile and then you can also of course you can change your mic it has transmit and receive equalization it has a um uh, tracking notch filter, which I have not played with. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Yeah, Michael showed us that the other day. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's I, the I, one where you drag it. That's right. Yeah, the, yeah. Sun, the, the Sun SDR has that. And then you can drop multiple notch filters um, along the oh. display. It's, it's crazy. That was it's nice. crazy. Yeah, I'm getting, me a, I'm getting me a Canuck right now. Hey, Raphael. How you doing, bud? So, <clears throat> um. You know, a few things are a little different. For one, there's no ALC that I can find at this point. I've made FTA contacts with it um, this morning on the Mac version, yesterday out in the shop, which is where the radio's parked, um, with the Windows version. So it's working well enough, but I'm still trying to figure out all the tweaks. And that's why I said I'm going to I'm gonna have to get the manual out and figure out what some of this stuff is. All right, yeah, flip a corner. Manual. Flip a corner. <laughs> Do what? Put the corner of your man card. You're getting out the manual. Right. I'm getting out the manual after I've been screwing with it for 24 that's right. hours. That's that's a free pass now, man. I'm looking for specific data points. It's okay. But uh, you have this control window, which lets you tinker with all the different settings based on up here, transmit, mic settings, phone, receive, equalization, and other, which the only thing under other is the notch filter. Equalizers. Looks like an equalizer. And Don's saying there ain't just one manual for those radios. I, and I got to tell you, with the Sun yeah. SDR, I wish there, I wish there was more than one manual. Um, I'll leave it at that. When I this, installed, this is the getting started to the getting started manual. Oh yeah, I mean this is right. right. The well, I was telling these guys before the show when you install this software on Windows. Um, now I'm remoted into the radio from my Mac um, right now, but I installed the Windows software, and it added like eight. Um, transmit audio devices and eight receive audio devices and three or four other devices I have yet to figure out what they're for so it's pretty it's pretty swank I have not sliced yet I have not done the slicing thing so I'm Take looking a deep forward breath to let's experiment that. you've yeah. been keeping your slices to pizza right now so right. far so right? far yeah Chicago style not that New York junk and mm. uh, I'll, I'll get I'll get some liquor later and get out there and slice like <laughs> slice like a bad mofo. I did I did up to four on mine once, but just you, on your on your on what? Elad. The Elad the Elad will the do E-Lad. um nine it'll do eight eight it'll do nine it'll do the radio plus eight eight plus one yeah. I so for those of you keeping eight. track at home, we have two new bingo squares and one replacement bingo square. So we have to add flex and we have to add Elad and then Moxon gets replaced by Chucky e. Hex. Right. I think Chucky Hex is a cool word. Or it I sounds do. like it the just, name of something that we so need to people call know, the Army to stop. Just two. so people know, I am not doing the thing where I'm trying to sell this and steal their name from Buddy Hex, okay? Like, it's been done in the past. <laughs> no, no, this is an homage. Right. This is this is an right. honor to our forefathers, You're those who have right. blazed trails before us. I respect, I respect their work. So. Yeah, they're, good, they're a good group of people out there. And the, the yeah. mass work tools that they sell are guy. fantastic. Oh. That thing's awesome. Let's see. This even well, uh, look at that disc. Well, that's the spherest projection of, of the flat earth, but uh, well. 
I, I will say you may have got mentioned one or two times out there on that and Bigfoot. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, when you're. When, when you are an electrifying <clears throat> internet hand tube celebrity like myself, I'm sure right. that uh, the topic comes up in most casual conversations. There's not much I can do about it. This has yeah, mostly and, the same there wasn't any women there. Did you guys see a Bigfoot while you were out there? Or? Uh, we, they, we decided it was not enough cover for him out there. Unless gotcha. he was going to, unless he, well, people were missing some stuff out there. So maybe he was going around the uh, motorhomes and stuff. I don't know. Could have been. All right, well, we're supposed to be talking about common mode current today. Um, yes, and I guess we cover by default some RFI and uh, EMI while we're having the conversation. Um, and so I, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but I'm going to try, and then anybody can call me out if I don't. Toroid. You're wrong. I think, I think that common mode current is a form of RFI, right? So you hear people call common mode current CMC and RFI is radio. Uh, f uh, frequency interference, but not all RFI is common mode current. Did I say that right? Correct. Yes. All right. Yeah. I wasn't. I got some. Good. I got some show notes here, like a professional. So I'm just seeing. Uh, That's why you're in the upper left, man. Put your glasses yeah. on so you can read them. <clears throat> well, I, you should see the print, son. <laughs> Anyhow, the um, the thing is, is that when you have nice common rack, mode current, it, 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 thanks, Don. When you have common mode current, it typically will traverse your transmission line. Now, some transmission lines are more susceptible to the effects of common mode current than others, namely coaxial cable, uh, it, because of the, the way the coaxial cable is constructed, it makes it more Tim's susceptible. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But what it does is it creates um, an electric field, electromagnetic field around the conductor that the CMC is traveling on. And that can cause problems with stuff traveling on your center pin or the inside of your shield. Um, so it can cause problems like an elevated noise floor, can cause uh, extra noise, or can cause degradation of signals, whether they're AM, FM, SSB, uh, or digital signals, all of that stuff uh, can get you. Now, typically, the type of current that we want on our transmission line is called differential mode, not common mode. And that means that while it's going one direction, the other side is going the other direction, so it's going back and forth like that. Common, common mode current kind of defies that and travels the other direction on your on the outer shield of your of your uh, coaxial cable, <clears throat> and causes that problem or that disruption. Hey, real quick, just so Jim doesn't embarrass himself, Jim, your audio is coming through to the, to the stream, so don't watch any movies. You know, I just turned that off. Any, right. any, yeah. mo any movies or anything like that? Movies. Movies? What? He's, he's on, ham, he's on ham hub. Free sharing our information. It's for porn delivery and cat. Delivery. I got something real quick. I need to interrupt because there's something important here that happened right before the show started. Yeah. This this Swede dude became a YouTube member of the Coffee and Ham Radio channel, so we got to celebrate a little bit. You, I got it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Perfect. He needs some milk. Perfect. Yeah. We got this one. We can do. That sounds about right for, for the Swede there. This is our friend Morton, LB0FI. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel himself. So if you aren't Thank subscribed to his channel, be sure to open up a new tab, go to YouTube, Thank search you, for LB0FI. And I will be on Morton's show tomorrow. We're going to talk about some X6100 yeah, stuff because there's some boy. news there. But if you would like to be a member, a supporting member of the Coffee and Ham Radio's crew, there is a link right below our handsome faces, well, mostly mine, that says join. And there's a couple of different membership levels, and you get some membership perks. Abe, tell them what they win. When you become a member, you get access to our monthly Zoom call where uh, we go in there and we do introductions and we talk about stuff. And sometimes it's not ham radio related and sometimes it is. And I, I don't know if we get any more people and then we're going to we're gonna have to have two Zoom calls. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and the other thing is the, the, um, you get access to the supporters chat in Toad's Discord, right? Where we talk about stuff before it becomes live national news. Right. Secret things. Secret. We got another one, actually. Yeah, so Phil put up noticed. his uh, member-only chat. That's one other thing you get is a badge in the chat, and you get member, um, you know, once once a month you get a, a member milestone chat that you can send out. It looks like a super chat, but doesn't cost you anything, so that's another benefit for you. And Phil says, welcome, LB0FI. Welcome, Morton. 
<laughs> light- Jim trying to do fancy theatrics with a spotlight. <laughs> the lighting, the lighting not- is this whole thing is killing me because I'm looking at it backwards and sideways. And- not coordinated enough. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway, we also have these delightful mugs. Liberty, there was an install. Like, I think they're the called the tumblers. Videos. I think they're called tumblers. Tumblers. There's from the, the south. These, tumblers. These delightful 30 ounce stainless steel insulated tumblers with a lid, available on coffeeandhamradios.com, along with the award-winning Apollo and Mercury antennas. I took them with me. I had no way of really displaying them, though. I took a few kits, but what I did you find out... You should have out, had a, like a, a, a trench coat on an antenna. Well, I, antenna? I used to have the banner, but I sent that to uh, T.O. You after last year. Yeah, yeah you don't it. want that banner back, by the way, because I know where it's been. Yeah, it was at Huntsville. Oh. Was he wet. wearing it? He was wearing yeah, it. Yeah, I was, actually. <laughs> it might the ban- the banner's no more good. We need another banner. Where did we, we have to figure out where we got that from. I think it was um, actually relatively uh, inexpensive. But, Signs.com. So the day I left, they had they, they did the uh, swap meet out there a day early. So next year, maybe I'll be ready at the swap meet if I stay long enough. <laughs> it has fun. nothing to do with RFI. Sorry. All right. Well, let's get back to that. So <clears throat> we talked a little bit about some of the things that can, like external things like power lines or maybe a power junction box or those green distribution boxes that you have out in your yard could cause problems. Um, you can get interference uh, from things like uh, Larry over at uh, Ham Radio Live. He was telling a story where his neighbor put a, 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 a pump into their koi pond, like a fountain pump, and uh, causing all kinds of terrible RFI problems. But also, you can have problems uh, with RFI uh, CMC because of your antenna, right? And so we wanted to talk a little bit about um, antennas that aren't maybe properly designed. Maybe they're not installed properly or even grounded correctly. Uh, can be the source of unwanted noise on uh, on your antenna system, which includes your antenna and your transmission lines. So I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> some of the challenges that we have when, when we buy antennas, build antennas, or tune antennas. And in, in a perfect dipole, both legs of your dipole are cut to the exact same length. Now, I, I've only seen one person who can actually cut both legs at the exact same length, and that's Chuck. Everybody else has a delta. Right, because in it could even just be this very, very uh, small minutia of length of those legs. But they, if they're different, as your electricity, which moves at the speed of the light, is going back and forth with that differential mode current that we talked about, you're going to have a timing or a synchronization problem when it gets back to the feed point. And when that happens, you often will get uh, <clears throat> you'll you'll get uh, voltage or current running down the outside. And we talked about that earlier. The the skin of the shield on your coaxial cable and that situation even becomes more compounded when folks are using n-fed antennas right like like a random wire or, or um a half wave n-fed <clears throat> and and i never understand why people would be like oh well, you'd, you you need a counterpoise um on an n-fed half wave but you don't need it on a nine to one it, it's almost the exact same thing other than the element is a different length and um the and the impedance ratio is different we're the other way around, right? Well, people will say ridiculous in both both ways. It, it, with both antennas, you have an un, you have an unbalanced antenna, and you're going to have a problem with with the way that the current is going in and out. And so that's typically why you'll see things uh, where people use a choke or a ballon behind the transformer like that, to tr- to try to correct or rectify that situation. Now, some folks will use the coaxial cable itself as a counterpoise, but when you do that. You're increasing the likelihood of an electromagnetic uh, field forming around your coaxial cable and causing greater interference. <clears throat> so when you when you when you start talking about things like grounding your antenna is the best, counterpoise uh, a, a series of counterpoises that creates a, a ground plane is second best, and then a counterpoise itself is third, and then the last would be using the coaxial cable as your counterpoise. I don't know if any of you boys got your antennas grounded, but do you want to you want to tell any stories about any of that kind of stuff? Um, I did notice with the, and Gary told me this a long time ago. Um, I was having problems with I had a, my antennas in fed halfway up, and that thing's capable supposedly of over a thousand watts. And when right. I was running like six seven hundred watts, it would start getting warm. And he advised he kind of said, "Won't you try grounding it?" And when I did, I, I never had a problem with it again. But I it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know that song. Oh man, you don't know that. I one? think we should Is ban her on the roof or something. He needs some milk. You sure can, Don. But after, but after I did ground it, it uh, I never had a problem with it again. Well, I mean, yeah, Don says his is grounded through the radios, and I'm not a grounding expert, and I'm not going to lecture anybody or tell anybody how to ground. The challenge is that when you ground through your radio, you still have all that current that's coming all the way into your shack, into your radio, and then out to that ground. So, um, if you ground at the antenna feed point, uh, you avoid some of that. So, my first uh, one of my first antennas, which is still up, is an NFED half wave from MFJ, mm -hmm. and it's always been not a very good antenna. And some but, people love that antenna. Well, but so my question is, they don't talk about putting a counterpoise on that at all. The instructions in that thing, it has a ground lug on the on the yeah. transformer box. And so I grounded it. I didn't grind it. Ground it. I did grind it. God dang it. Grounded it. Grounded. Tim's got something else on his mind this morning. Grounded Too much time on Ham Hub this morning. And I didn't see a whole lot of difference between the two. So now I'm wondering if I need to go out there and throw, a, you know, 20 or 30 feet of counterpoise on that and see if that changes anything. on that. Because I'm sure it's a 49 to 1. It's a, it's it a, is. I've cracked them open. Yeah, it's like a 40, 40, 30, 15, 10 kind of deal. Yeah. 10. Yeah. Well, um, it, I, I know on verticals, like if you, if you buy a vertical for your 2 meter, if you buy a half wave, they, they always say it doesn't need the ground i mean ground plane is going to help it probably but for it to get your it doesn't really need it right right well i mean like the thing is is that antenna manufacturers and antenna sales people doesn't need it halfway right well, well if your dipole is cut perfectly it won't need one it for it sure any common yeah. common occurrence that comes back as a part of that um that antenna design but you could still pick up interference from power lines for example and you would want one in that case the thing is, it's like radio, uh, I'm sorry, antenna manufacturers will tell you stuff like, hey, this vertical doesn't need a ground plane. Well, I don't know if any of them need a ground plane, but they'll tell you that to sell you that because you'll buy it thinking it's going to work. It's going to work as well as something like a DX commander with a ground plane. And it's just not. Um, the Physics are physics, right? It, it doesn't it doesn't change depending upon the type of antenna. Or it's like that. Um, that other antenna, like they were calling it the HOA killer or whatever, and it's just like a single wire antenna that runs up in the air and one across the yard. The antenna is so lossy that uh, it's it's almost not worth it's almost not worth putting up. But you know, you get somebody tested out and they're like, "It may I made contacts on it," and we've seen where um, Rob Seven Forty One tuned up a tree and made an FTA contact, literally and ha hammered a nail into a tree and <coughs> tuned it up, and then. Um, our friend Steve K5ATA tuned up the the parking sign right with the G90 and was able to make contacts on it. I tuned up my roof. Now what we could do is we could saw that parking sign down, stick it in a box, and be like, "It works. We made contacts on it. This is a great <laughs> antenna. It doesn't need doesn't need a ground plane." The Cartana Rustomatic. Yeah, <laughs> and you could stick a dummy load right in that box and say it's perfect match on Ooh, on 50 ohms. It could be the one Cartana one. Lucifer. <laughs> right. Hey, and you know what? Kevin had this antenna out there. He was making contacts. <laughs> <laughs> did he have his uh did he have that chameleon that uh, chameleon jacket on that uh yeah he, send he, him? Was sport, he was sporting the, the black chameleon with the red light writing on it yeah. <laughs> i like think matt just just nailed what i what it i was, just kind of realized sharp today, jacket, I, I quit using that antenna a long time ago it's still up i just haven't used it because it's so crappy but i grounded it because it's like it has a ground lug it must need to be grounded but that's not the same as as really throwing out radio yeah, so they're they're all they're all a little bit different. I mean, if you have a really nice ground rod and it's hammered into the ground eight feet and you know it's copper and all that, and then the ground is actually good conductive ground, you're probably fine. But then, um, you know, some people put the ground rod in and then they also put in put in a radial field. Um, it's just diff there's just different ways to do it. But when you have a lot of noise, a good way to, to work on getting rid of that noise is to go through that progression. You know, can you can you ground it? And if you can't, right. then can you put a radio system in? If you can't, can you put a counterpoise in? And if you can't do that, then can you ground it at the shack feed point or something? Or even as as um, Don was saying, ground grounded inside the shack. Now, when I did uh, I did my nine to one random wire. The radial for that is a, about a 30-foot piece of RG, RJ, god dang it, 
Cat 5e. I think I'm having a stroke today. Usually it's the, the radio you're using Cat 5 for the radio? For the radio, yeah. I just nice. I just skinned it all back, tied all the all the wires together on both ends and threw it out on the ground and it's literally it's not stapled, it's just 30 40 feet of Cat 5 laying out in the yard and it's it made a huge <clears throat> difference. Yeah, a for counterpoises, I must always start off with like 17 feet. Um, and most of the time, just just leave it that way. And everybody's like, "Well, why do you why do you start off with 17 feet?" Right. Why because it's the first time I built an antenna. Some guy said he used a 17 foot. Uh, oh. uh, you know, <laughs> okay. and, and then when I look hey. at it, I don't know. It's a quarter wave on 20. Maybe it's got something to do with that. When you're doing CB, it's got to be an 18 foot piece of coax and nothing else. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> They get some of them would be like, I need to see the installation of the CB, and I need to know that that they get those guys get worked up over that. There's a there's a guy out there selling a bunch of CB stuff this weekend. And my, how's my audio? You guys are saying my audio dropped. Audio is fine. It sounds fine. good to me. Vern, put down the alcohol. It's way too early. But the well, less we hear, the better. I saw. Well, I was looking up stuff for that ATU 100 I've been messing with. I saw a, a, a CB guy was was using that tuner on a CB. Which I thought was uh, was pretty funny. So I got uh, let's see, radio frequency interference and common mode current are two separate about, related uh, issues. Did you write down um, like electric? You know, like electricity in the air type thing. I think this will go. Um, I do. I desert. do have. I do have it on here in terms of RFI. Um, so what I'm saying is, is that there are two related issues that can perfect a. Uh, can affect the performance of electronic systems, but they're a little bit different. RFI's unwanted radio uh, frequency signal interferes with normal operation is caused by a variety of sources. Electronic devices, we talked a little bit about that, power lines, um, and that have solar and weather activity. So sun flares, for example, or like you're saying, lightning storms. Like, you want to talk a little bit about, like, did you see any static crashes or anything like that while you were out there? Um, we saw just a lot of, I think the night that we got Hayden, we had a lot of static in there because it was windy. And I, and I was talking mm -hmm. to a guy who, who used to work in the Navy, uh, was in the Navy and in and, and that field. And he said they would use Dawn liquid soap with a little bit of it, mix in water and wipe it on any fiberglass like motorhomes and stuff mm -hmm. to get the static electricity off. The, he, get, he, goes, he goes, I bet you're seeing a ton of it out here because it's windy and everybody, nobody's done that, right? Did, did I hear that right? Did you say he rubs olive oil on his motorhome? No. He said, I, um, no, so Dawn, Dawn, so Dawn. Oh, okay. Did you see Did that you on so? TikTok? Cause I'm just as bad. I don't know. This guy was, he was, <laughs> after talking to him for a few minutes, he was, he knew his life. Astro glide work. Just curious. Jim, TM. I don't know. It's only about, for your, only it's about, for your it's hair. about free electrons, right? In, in the air. <clears throat> so that's one reason why folks will, will ground their antenna at the feed point is because you do get static charge build up on there. Um, and it, it can be pretty bad. Like I saw a uh, a video where the guy had his coaxial cable. He was holding it up, and you could see a spark arcing across the shield in the in the center conductor because there was so much static electricity on his on his antenna. Another thing is is that you can you can actually fry your test devices, like your rig experts or your nano VNAs, mm -hmm. if you take um, and if your antenna has a lot of static electricity on it, and you screw it into your your test device. Right. You can smoke that thing. So it's always a good idea to short out your coax before you connect it up. I don't always do that, and that's a bad thing. Man, I try to remember to do that because I knew that. I want to. I want to get just. Uh, I want to take a couple of alligator clips and some wire and put a couple resistors in line and just mm -hmm. coil it up and keep it with the rig expert. So when I open up the case that that's in, it's sitting right there in your face. It's right there in my face. Do it now. Because <clears throat> I would be most put out if I smoked my rig expert. Now, if I smoked a nano VNA, ah. And so now we're talking yeah. a little bit about RFI can cause he problems. He ignored that. I thought he'd get all. I thought he'd get all. Up. Well, this the, the thing. Like so, I've got this Nano VNA <clears throat> that was sent to me for a test and review, and it's like a four hundred dollar Nano VNA. It's big and it's got uh, oh, that's end fantastic. connectors on nice there, looking. and you can see it can in the they field. Still call it Nano if it's four hundred dollars. It's, it's actually called something MIDI? else. Mega VNA. It's, it's called the SV forty four. The MIDI pad. One A. Oh one A. But so anyhow, somebody was giving me grief about it. And they're like, I can't see spending that kind of money on that kind of device to test my antennas. I'll stick with my rig expert. And I'm like, well, son, your rig expert probably costs the, same, the, the exact same amount of money and actually it it, it is a little bit limited. 
the other thing is, is that I'm starting to get upset. The other thing is, is that people will will, will say, you gotta you gotta calibrate out. that damn VNA every time you every time you get it out, and that's not true. That's you not can true. calibrate it; it has memories. You can save your calibrations, and you can set one as the default calibration that boots up when you turn it on. Meanwhile, nobody's calibrating their rig experts. Right. It's and the thing is, is that it's just comes out. You know, some somebody was like, "Well, I heard so and so on the YouTube saying you yeah. have to calibrate it." Every time. I think he keeps. I think he keeps joining. I think I think he gets. He joins and then he he declines and then he joins again because I think he joined last week too. He, he likes the celebrity. But, but, That's okay. Thanks, Ed. He needs we like milk. it too. We'll give you a yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about damage. So like RFI can cause damage to your equipment too. So that's why it's important to have protections in place. Like we talked about grounding, um, but I think Chuck was telling us last year he 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 caught he he overloaded RFI overloaded his 991A right and burned up your finals. Is that the... well the uh, they have their what I don't call it a contest station, but they got their station there, and when those guys, I think they're running legal limit maybe, and it was mm -hmm. it just. It, but the uh, the new radio, the ELAD, has like a buffer, and it, it right. goes up, and then it slowly comes back down. So when I was trying to break pileups, and that guy Lou did, he, I, literally I was on there, and they, maybe they had the same frequency all the time. I don't know, but nobody was there when I started, and I'm trying to break bust this pileup, and I can't hear the guy come back to me because it just took me out. We were too we were too close this year. I want to I want to move out way out in the desert someplace next time. You gotta be careful out it. there, renegades. And we gotta do a dance, Jim. Do you got it or you want me to do it? Nah. Cards, my brother's kids. He needs some milk. Thank you, Andy. It's like I'm sitting here playing cards with my brother's kids or something. You nerve-wracking <laughs> sons of bitches. All right, I think I can I'm on it. On to, uh, on to my next. Uh, nope. Yeah, nope. We do. We got more. Oh, Richie's man. radio. We got another one. Yeah. yeah. That, that sounds like a YouTube channel too. See what oh, I can find. Oh, Let's see if you can find the link on Richie. Yeah, if he's got one, let me check. All right, so what I have on my notes here is both common mode current RFI can cause interference and signal degradation. Uh, and we can, and both can be uh, mitigated using similar techniques such as filters, ferrite beads, shielding, other techniques to block noise or reduce interference. A like grounding is, uh, is is one of the ones that we wanted to talk about. So I have uh, some examples here, if we want to take a look at them, of some of these things that they're talking about. Let me see if I can get my uh, my camera set up. So Richie's Radio Room does have a YouTube channel. He's got a new subscriber. If y'all folks could right-click on that link, open a new tab, and then click that shiny subscribe button, Richie would sure appreciate it, and so would we. Yeah, make sure you right-click so and open a new tab. Don't get don't so was a Swede away. also. We didn't mention that on the Swede because uh, we didn't link him, but we mentioned thousand. him. Let me, yeah, let Swede's me got a channel too. And Tio's is almost at a thousand. Let me get a link to the Swede. I don't want to flex. See what I did there, or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I okay, just went through twenty one hundred. Please copy, week. Jim. Awesome, I'm like yeah. a news reporter, Liberty. Richie. <clears throat> so, Y'all, oh, I'm watching oh. Richie's subs go up right now. Y'all hit it. Hit I it like it owes you money. Come on. Yeah, hook him up. Hook him up. Richie, now, Same. you're getting all this free promotion. We expect, we may not ask for anything today, <clears throat> but in the future. <laughs> when we may ask for a favor. We you're may ask for a favor. All right. Good deal. Real quickly, let's take a look at a couple of different things. So we, we just rambled off a bunch of devices and things like that that you can use to help with RFI and CMC uh, suppression. And what we have here are two different things. And <clears throat> this is called a choke. And the reason it's called a choke is you have your coaxial cable that runs through. This is just a series of ferrite beads. This this is a ferrite bead. So it kind of looks like a toroid. This is a, this is a toroid, but this is a ferrite bead. And what they'll do is they'll run these along a piece of um, coaxial cable before they crimp the ends on. 
and then hit it with a nice piece of shrink wrap or, or some kind of heat shrink. And when that happens, you have a stick like this. And as the signal on the outer side of the shield passes through these ferrite beads, it becomes attenuated and attenuated and attenuated. So um, what this does is it filters out any of that RFI or CMC traveling on the outside of the shield. And it works really well. <clears throat> That's called a choke. Now, something like this uh, is called a, a ballon. I, I always call this a choke ballon. Um, Just to because be double to me, precise. Yeah, I, but I don't know if that's right or wrong. Um, because the thing is, is that what it does is it definitely chokes off that uh, it, or impedes the current on the outer side of the shield. I've got some videos showing how we measure that with an NOVNA. Now, isn't um, that also called a current ballon? Well, so you, could, you could also call it a current ballon. So you could also have... Some balance are current balance, some balance are voltage balance, and they work by balancing either the voltage on either side of the, of the, of the transformer or balancing the current. And you should say, well, when your current's the same, it should be the same voltage, and that's not necessarily true given things like impedance. Um, but it's generally accepted today that a current balance is a better solution than a voltage balance because it's less lossy. I'm sure somebody's going to be like, I've been using voltage balance 35 years and I never had a problem. And we want to hear all about it down in the comment section below. Um, but anyhow, this is what I would call a choke, <clears throat> a choke balance. And then something like this, I would actually just call a, call a ballon. And what this does is it makes sure that things are balanced on either side. Um, this is just something I was playing around with. And it's, it's a, this is a two point, it's supposed to be, look, it broke. It's supposed to be a 2.8 to one, um, Unun here that I was going to use for a tra as a transformer for an antenna that I never quite got working. Um, but this would be what I would consider a, a, a ballon. But I'm not really sure if there is a difference between a choke ballon and a ballon. And then here would be another example of something like this you would use on a um, on a dipole, or in this case, this is another example of that. So do you put that ballon. in your suitcase when you travel? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, he wears it as a brooch. <laughs> Ham brooch. It ham ties jewelry. his outfit together. It does. It goes well with his eyes. It brings the it brings the whole thing together, right? So with when you when you start talking about like these these choke balance, um, I have one at the feed point of my antenna. I have one going into the back of my antenna tuner. I, I, I put them everywhere um, because I want to have as low of a noise floor, and I don't want any interference coming in my shack. It, as much as I can control that, I do, I do that. Have you done have you done a video and showed showed that? Yeah. yeah I've done it. find it. Every time yeah. you ask Gabe a question, he replies with a video usually. So I just <laughs> well, when you've been making videos since you were three years old. Right. Yeah. Y'all like need to go back and watch Ape's original videos. I, I've taken a lot. A lot. More, more than a hundred I've taken down. Um, but some of them were pretty funny, but some of them were pretty stupid. Back so. when you had hair. I still got I still got a lot on my back. Look, look at him get defensive <laughs> on your back. No, he did. He st he kind of he kind of got a lot of hair on my back. Is that what you said? That's what, you got to clean them ears. <laughs> but um, yeah, some of those early videos. Like there, there's one where I climb up and get in. I, I think I took it down, where I got into a World War II fighter plane and couldn't <laughs> couldn't get out. Oops. I mean, th those things are tight fitting when you when you squeeze into one of those things, and uh, it was not. Uh, yeah, it's the plane that's small. Yeah, it, it is damn small. Well, back in World War II, the pilots were smaller because they didn't have proper nutrition like we have today. They, they, they didn't have all, <laughs> yeah. all, all the refined foods. That's it. I'm not today we fat. Have proper I'm just nutrition. well nutriented. Right. Nutriated. <laughs> you're you're nutrient rich. Jim. I'm nutrient rich. <laughs> Woo. So um, let me get my my prop notes. Anybody want to talk about any chokes or balance that they're using over there or what? So in an end fed in any end fed you're going to be looking at a 49 to 1, correct? Well, on a um, half wave end fed. Oh, yeah, half wave end fed, I should say that. Or a some some people use a 64 and some somebody was recently making a case for a 43 to 1 when they're Now why would you the math works out well on a on a on an end fed half wave with a 49 to 1. Why would you want to use something different? I've never used anything different. Now, and one of the things I here, why bother? It, one of the things I would say is is that with with smaller tow toroids, like if you're doing a really small small one, like for QRP and stuff like that, a lot of times what folks will do is they'll do a uh, three to twenty one as opposed to, like ours is a two to um, two to fourteen ratio. Some folks right. will do a, a, a three to twenty one, and when that happens, you might want to take or put an extra wrap on, so you might have a three to twenty two or a three to twenty, 
to extra extra tune that in and that would give you something different than a 49 to 1 ratio but it would be close don says you use a 9 to 1 for your gutters yeah and some people use a 5 to 1 like uh, the, the 5 to 1 is what is in the um mcom three by chameleon for example yeah so uh, you need to measure the impedance at yeah. your feed point mm -hmm. and then design your ballon appropriately design your unun excuse me appropriate appropriately and when you're talking about your feed point you don't mean back at the radio you mean at no. the antenna the feed point, feed point of the point. antenna yes yeah yeah so it, the the magic of the nfit half wave is at the at the point where you transition from antenna to coax there's 2450 ohms of impedance there and you need to use you know 2450 divided by 49 is 50 and so that's why that magic sauce works so if you had a different antenna length instead of like an NFED half wave, you'd have a different amount of resistance at that feed point. You'd need a different un -un. So Right. Yeah, and the rig so expert will measure impedance. It's one of the measurements it does. Um, it's got a page that shows all those stats um, on one page. You can also do it with a nano VNA. You can also pull up a Smith chart on a rig expert if, if you want to. If you're Smithy, I'm more into English myself, but whatever. <laughs> Well, the, the thing is also like when th this is a this is a transformer that I was working on for something like an off center fed dipole. Um, and what this does is it's a, it's a trans match that Tim's back ma to the show. helps match your impedance. But I would still also use another matching device, my ETU back at my in my ham shack. So in that, in that case, I would have two different matching devices. One is active and one is passive um, on my antenna system. So with one at your feed point and one at the back of your antenna tuner, that really knocked down your noise. Mm -hmm. Did it impact your reception in any way, or just it really lowered the noise for the more broadbanded stuff? Really well, so let, let, let's think about, like, m more importantly than your signal. Oh, we got Brian. Uh, we have a... Uh, oh, oh, Lord. Okay. Is he new tech? Yes, sir. Are we... Uh, I got music. That fits that hat that Brian's Yeah! He needs some those, milk! Those two go together. Thank you. <laughs> That's our new member song. I like that for new members. It's special. <clears throat> it makes them feel special and happy. And so what, what I was saying is, is that the, the most important thing that you can have is your signal to noise ratio <clears throat> and, and have that as positive. So if say you're picking me up at an S5 signal, but you have an S4 noise floor, right. you're going to be able to hear me, but you're, there, it's, there's going to be some challenges there. If you can suppress anything that's causing extra noise on your transmission line, such as common mode current and bring your, your noise floor down from a four to a three or to a two, your signal to noise ratio has grown by two or 300%. Right. And that means that I'm going to come in clearer and more audible, assumably, which, uh, which is a, which is a good thing. And what did you use to choke at your, at your feed point and behind the tuner, a 240, 43? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've done a, a million different, uh, a, a million different things. Now what I typically use is a 31 for a, uh, for, for a choke. Um, but I've used, I've used 43s and then, you know, I've got a choke box, a box full of stuff that I put together, and wh whatever I can find as I'm cussing and trying to put up the new hotel or get something out is, 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 what, is what gets used. Um, that sounds you like know, something I, that they'd have talk about on Criminal Intent. I, I, really I really do like this. Um, this is a choke that I got from uh, Chameleon that I really do like. It's expensive. That was like 50 bucks. Man, yeah. that looks really good, though, because wrapping yeah. your coax through a choke is a pain. right so you, you see something like this you're like that looks ghetto That's as hell i'm not going to put that in my ham shack my you know meanwhile they got i don't care that it rapid. looks ghetto but making one is just a pain in the ass wrapping are we not going to talk about evan's feelings oh oh my god is he yep he's still, he still on about it i mean All right. I like that style, to tell you the truth, uh, with the beads, because when, if you put it on etch antenna, you can mm -hmm. just put it right to the mast. Really, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's cool. 
it, it's nice because it, it's convenient and it's clean and it fits in a box. I mean, that's those are actually why. made by the the place in Texas there, um, the cable place. I forget the name brand. So why is that so pricey? You reckon are those are those because little... it's chameleon? <laughs> because it's chameleon. Okay, <laughs> I was going to say. Well, I was going to say, are those little roids that expensive? I I, Does that mean no. it doesn't look like it's hard to build? Jeez, no, it's not I hard to say. Build. I, you know, I want to say from the built. company that makes those for them. I think I paid ABR. thirty-five or forty bucks. ABR. They're asking if it's ABR. Yeah. yeah, ABR. And then uh, Buddy Pole sells one as well. Okay, but theirs has their their little split for their Versa Hub thing on the end of it. Right. Hold on here. I'm going through my I'm going through my notes. <laughs> Morton, that was like a week ago. <clears throat> it just hasn't grown back in yet. And what see, time is uh, what time is your deal with with Morton tomorrow? I need to look it up because you know you got all that time zone and daylight savings time, daylight wasting time. Right, I mean, like Morton's stuff. eating dinner right now, I think, what or at it? least yelling at his kids to get in the house before the street lights come on. Or he's like, we've got the Ludafisk ready to go. Oh, my oh God. Ludafisk. <laughs> mm, good stuff. I don't think Morton even likes that. We asked him that. He did. He said he didn't really care. Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought all, they, all the Swedes grew up eating that stuff. Gary mentions also you can buy the Snap-on ones for the, those also. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got one around here. They make, them in, different, they make them in different, they make sizes, them different, yeah. different sizes for different coax. So, so tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central is the, the Morton Central. show. We're gonna we're gonna ritty with the X sixty one hundred. Ritty with the X sixty. Man, that is a fancy. Is it the ritty roundup tomorrow, that. or is there? A... Not that I know of. Iowa Hank's like saying he's except for he's Norwegian. Right, Hank. I know we've told bro, that about bro, forty times. He they're all Swedes to me. <laughs> <laughs> go go check out Morton's Poda stats page. He's done more parks on the air activations in Sweden than he's done in Norway. Just so now what? Now what, Iowa well, Hank? Well, now, you know, to be fair to Ape, Morton We no, called you like... by your government name. <laughs> <laughs> I called him Ape? Nice no, no, he said Iowa name. Hank. We call him Hawk around these parts. Oh. To be fair to Ape, you know, Morton only lives like about a minute a from minute. Sweden. I mean, he's like, he could throw a baseball and hit and cause an international incident is what I'm he's saying. He's closer right? to Sweden right. than I am to Canada. I can right. say every time I talk to the dude, he's in Sweden. That you were in Canada. Sort not not like yet today. I went there for breakfast. <laughs> well, Tio is actually Swedish farther year. north than parts of Canada, even though he's in the United States. I think so is he's Chuck. Far, farther north than Montreal. <laughs> yeah, I am. Maybe even Nova Scotia. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm making fun of Canada. <clears throat> they have some poutine. poutine. I don't think I've got much <sighs> other in here. Uh, the The thing is, is that you're you're better off using using. Um, Twin line, feed line, a balanced cable versus coaxial cable is less susceptible, although you can still suffer the effects of RFI uh, on that. Um, and what I have here is this coaxial cable is typically used in a system where it's difficult or impossible to use a balanced transmission line due to its design and characteristics. Balanced transmission line, I think, would just be a giant, huge pain in the ass. But people who, like Hollywood, loves it and talks about it all the time. So, um, go ahead. I have no, a question. That's it. So with with ladder line, my antenna is in the backyard. It's 125 cable feet from where it comes in the house. Right. Can I run ladder line in a conduit underground? Yeah, people do. Um, really? Okay. And then I have a um, window pass through that actually has termination terminators on there mm -hmm. for right. for balance oh, for balance feed line. I made my own. And I don't. I didn't put that feature on mine. I just drilled holes and put in the bulkhead connectors yeah well, there's the, through pvc to go through the through my uh, wall of my house so it's 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 kind of protected from all the other cables going through i'm, I'm not going to have to drill it's, a hole it's not side of the house anymore it's it's not as touchy as people make you think okay I'll just say well I mean, is, <coughs> so is balance line cheaper than coax I mean, like 100 feet of RG213 versus 100 feet of ladder line? Well, I, I got to tell you, so if you were, were going to build ladder line, Maybe. ladder line's lossless, and that's one of the reasons why people want to use things like LMR right. 400. Now, I think that RG58 or RG8X is going to be cheaper than making your own balance line, but it's going to be, the balance line's going to be cheaper than like LMR 400. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Now, I, I bought a, a mess of that 450-ohm twin line or ladder line or window line or whatever it is you want to call it. But I, I bought that to build a, uh, 
I wanted to do a mini G5RV that I haven't done yet. Um, now you could run that all the way in, but that that's expe- that stuff was expensive. I've got I used RG213, which is the DX engineering equivalent to LMR400, or the Messi and Poloni Hyperflex nuclear. Pay more because of the name is Italian. Able to yeah. Try. Here you are getting balance. That line takes forever to make. There's a there's a video on YouTube where the guys at the um, Toad Harbor Net, nothing to do with Toad's Discord, um, where they were making it. They were making it. They were using zip ties, uh, two two strands of wire, and then these plastic tubes in the middle. And uh, it did look time consuming, but the, but it looked like it was a, good, a nice transmission line when they were done. You can you can take uh, you know the old big pins. Guys yeah. will take those and, and just take the inside out, go to the dollar store and get a pack of 20 or something. You got it or you want me to get it? I got it. I got it. The thing kept slipping away. We from need me. some milk! Chuck? <laughs> hmm? There you go. It kept slipping Ron, away thank from you. Me. The, the end on this thing is also the exact right size to remove standoffs, the little plastic clips that go through PCBs and spring back out. You put this down on top of it, it squeezes it, and then you pull the standoff out. That's why it's about that. For the ladder line, you just pull that blue part off. Yeah. yeah same thing that was saying. You just run wire ties through it. Uh, so Shooter said he doesn't see that form on the list for him, Mcation. That's well, the thing is, is that we haven't made any official we haven't we made any official it. announcements yet either, um, because if we were to make an official announcement, the run on ticket sales, the parking, hotels, everything would get sold. It would just be, it's It'd too be much. madness. Well, he yeah, says yeah. he's staying at the La Quinta on Mermaid Avenue like it's a joke, unironically. But <laughs> now you know, <laughs> right? But the La Quinta down there is nice. They have um, it's usually working. They have a Belgian waffle machine in the lobby that uh, you can go down there and make yourself some breakfast. The fancy kind that of you have over for some unknown reason. Yeah. Well, heat rises. Make you feel like you're a part of it. Heat rises. Well, both sides are heated, though. So, yeah. But it still rises. It does. <laughs> Only on a round earth. Well, I don't know about all that. You can be flat and round. You can't be flat and <laughs> spherical, though. <laughs> right. There we go. Orlando would see the biggest influx of tourists since I've caught open. Um, Experimental prototype community of tomorrow. So Ryan's asking, ladder line is balanced because of equal spacing uh, up and down the line. The equal spacing up and down the line makes sure that the magnetic interference, magnetic interference or magnetic fields created by either one of those legs of the transmission line will, will cancel each other out with proper right. differential mode current. Right. If you have combo current, you'll have a stronger signal on one side, stronger magnetic field on one side than you do the other, and that's where you start to have an imbalance and degradation. <clears throat> yeah. Now, the balance line has two uh, conductors right? One on either side, that's one and two conductors. Your coaxial cable technically has three conductors. So you have your center pin or your center conductor. Then you have some dielectric. Uh, it's like it's like foam that melts and bends and causes all kinds of problems. Then outside of that, you typically have some sort of uh, mesh shielding. Both sides, the inner, inner part of that shield is a conductor as well as the outer part of that shield due to the skin effect. So you technically have three transmission lines inside or three conductors inside a uh, coaxial transmission line and that's why it's unbalanced the uh the spacers i think actually we uh just so you know kevin and i he had his kx2 with him so we threw up the uh, doublet that we're working on to sell and we noticed that his tuner would tune different because of the wind blowing them apart because i didn't have any spacers at all mm-hmm. and that works we twisted them and it stayed consistent. Yep. Because they weren't well, blown apart. Yeah, and then also the distance that they ha- are between each other impacts the impedance that's of that the, line. That's the, the ohms, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah 300 or 450 or 600. Because <clears throat> like some people are like, I like mine spaced at six inches. you know. But then if yeah. you look at 450 ohm ladder line, I think it's like an inch and a half or something like that. Yeah, technically the your insulation will give you something between the two wires if they're set side by side. For the portable stuff, I like it. I like it like that because I don't. I'm not so worried about. I'm, I'm worried more about how how to wind it up. Yeah, I, I think that's and, what we said. K yeah. K nine EI. I think that's what we said. 
It does. It does do the. But it also changes as it moves. It changes the SWR too. Oh yeah, yeah. When it's when it's definitely and that that can happen with like uh, just even regular antenna like dipoles that are put up in the in a windy environment. Right. You can you can watch the change. And we did find Jason it was more consistent twisted primate. <clears throat> At what point do you consider Feelings. a band specific antenna versus broadband antennas? Um, Feelings. Well, I think it's going to depend on what you're trying to do. So, mm -hmm. like with as. Like I'm, I'm a greedy ham, right? Like I want an antenna that works well everywhere, so I don't have to do have a lot of pain in the ass going up and changing, and switching, and all that kind of stuff. Exactly so I use a really, right. a really, I use a real broad, broad broadband antenna, but because that antenna can receive on so many different, you know, resonant or or can pick up signals in so many different uh, frequencies, I inherently have more noise Yo, than I would right. if I had a a, a, a single band resonant. Yeah, antenna. I'm answering now. So we, it would depend on what I wanted to do or what I wanted to accomplish. Um, I'm I'm with Ape on that. I don't want to put up a single band antenna, right? Just because I don't want to have to go out and change if I want to talk on another band. I mean, I am finishing up Hayden's 10 meter um, build that he did uh, last week, week before last, and I'm going to play with that just because 10 meters is hot and I want a 10 meter specific antenna. But normally, yeah, I want. I've got a DX Commander here at the house and a repeat over on my shop and multi-band I, I love my doublet for my for my low bands like from from 20 to 10 actually 20 to 2 meter i have yaggies so okay. i like those for that but for the same reason you have one wire up and you have multiple bands right yeah yeah and it's that that's what kind of what I'm saying. Like I I just have an NFED half wave as my main antenna, and I, I can use it on multiple bands. But a couple of weeks ago, I did a 10 meter dipole video where I built and put up a 10 meter dipole, and that 10 meter dipole outperforms my NFED half wave on 10 meters. But with that 10 meter dipole, won't work on 15, 20, 30, and 10, and, and 40. Um, so there's all, there's always just a little bit of give and take, and you have to kind of find out what, what the balance is. I saw a question about uh, 705 and FT8. Did we get that one? I did, yeah. yeah. T.O. got it. All right. Yeah, yeah. 705 is actually so easy to FT8 with that there aren't even that many videos on it. I should do one, but I, I know everybody's going to go, I know how to do this already. Well, yeah, well, you, you do. do you got to do a video. You got to do a video. But not everybody else does. Yeah, so it's it's super easy to do digital modes on the IC705 because it's got a sound card built into it. It's super easy to do digital modes on the X6100 because it has USB ports, sound card built into it. Um, not all radios with USB ports have sound cards. That's how they get you. Uh, so it just... You know, just just get at it. I've got a lot of videos on my channel about how to set up FT8 with a lot of different radios, because that's one of the things that I do, and uh, it's, it's really easy. You just got to play with it, and you know, it it's figure outable. It's not all impossible. The, all the icoms, the current icoms, and all the current Yesus have all that built in. Where you'd really find trouble is if you're going to use an older, if you buy a used older radio, like a Kenwood, like a Kenwood 570D from some sketch in Wisconsin, then it takes a little bit of extra gadgetry in the middle to make it work. Um, but any any of the newer radios, and like Steve said, the 705 is... Now, what you could do, somebody was saying 705 is not a good first radio because it's it's you know only only 10 watts and all that kind of now stuff. That is my opinion, yes. You can buy yourself a noisy amplifier. That you should no. use like <laughs> dun, dun. Where's the sound effect? Dun, dun. Yeah, 891 does not have a built-in sound card. It has a sound connection on its six-pin mini DIN. It's, it's not the same, quote unquote. It it produces audio output that you can feed into a sound card, but it does not have a sound card. The radio, like the 705, for example, shows up as a sound card in your computer's device manager. Right. Right. But they both work fantastically on FT8. I've got videos on the. Uh, so what are you going to do with the uh, hold up the amplifier again? Well, primate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some 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 more testing with it. I don't know how well this is going to. You know what? Let me do this. Give me one second. Back, back to the desk cam. We'll watch. Everybody relax. I mean, we're all here. It's cool. All right. So, so can you see that? Yeah. Oh yeah. So when you take a look at it, um, the thing is, we had a problem on 20 meters, and that's using this filter here which is 30 through 17. And I did not test the 30 meter band and I did not test the 17 meter band. Now, when we tested on 10, we were clean. So I'm going to assume 10, 11, 
not that I would be using an amplifier on 11, 12 and 15 are all fine. They don't have, they don't have the harmonics problem. So what I want to do is I want to do some more testing to verify from 17 to 30 and, and say, hey, look, we definitely do have a problem. Then I'm going to pop this baby open and uh, we're going to take a look at the filter that is used when you're here. It's a low pass filter and we're going to we're going to tear that filter out. And we're going to rebuild it. We can make it better. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the plan. So Marvin there, where is it? says he has a surge protector. No, it really probably won't. It'll help that's you with on surges. Your, it'll help with surges, but it's not going to help with CMC down the antenna line. Yeah, at all. right. The CMC is coming down your feed line in some form well, or another. So, <clears throat> so we've, Marvin, if you do have, so the Alpha Delta surge protector, my understanding is there's a little gas tube in there that'll disrupt Right, it'll 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 melt some sort of solder or something in there it's when like you get a, a surge, fuse, right? Yeah, yeah. When when it goes explodes. through, and you have to get you have to replace that gas tube, but that surge protector should have a ground on it. And if you do ground that surge protector, then it would help with your CMC. But if you're just using it as an inline surge protector with no grounding, then the answer is no. Right. Uh, an eight ninety one is not a current radio. Well, they do sell it as if it. They is. may still sell it, but it ain't current. <laughs> it ain't current. No, well, it's a good radio. Actually, it's so it old; it's been discontinued and restarted three times. So, so it's, <laughs> it's kind of just getting it's kind of strange. Again. It's kind of strange. Well, they said I was wrong. I'm no, I'm not. An eight ninety one is not a current radio. Nine ninety one, seven ten, seventy three hundred, seventy six ten. Obviously, you can go to the one hundred one is today and buy an eight ninety one brand new in the box with a three year warranty. I should walk. Well, it's. It's not a newer one, newer current radio. How's that? I'll go with that. I'll I'll go with that. Chuck is okay. Chuck is. I'm just trying to help correct. you out, Jim. More. Well, how long is it? How long is eight ninety one? I was not wrong. How long has it been around? This is the battlefield that Jim's going to die on today. He's going to die because he's wrong. How long what? It's it's, it's newer than a nine ninety one, I think. What? <laughs> <clears throat> I I I, th I was under the impression that the eight ninety one was a relatively newer radio. Yeah, it is. Um, I was under the impression it was not current in production. Liberty, is but current. what is the when did when did the radio come out? <clears throat> I don't know, nineteen ninety three. No, I'm no. joking. It's not. It's not. Hang it's on. a newer radio. No, it was like about five years ago. Right? I, 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 I do, Kevin. Here's the K core here. Yeah, it's a pretty new radio. They replaced the A fifty seven kind of, kind of. It came out in twenty sixteen at Dayton yeah. Hamvention. Oh, about yeah. six years ago. Yeah. Hmm. About what time? When was it? Twenty? What? What year? Twenty sixteen. So this is a little more than six years ago. Being fair, it's seven or eight. But at, at the end of the day, to me, that's a new radio. Well, because you can go down to HRO and buy it right off the shelf. Yeah. But they have them in the stock. new equipment shelf. Now the thing is, people are like, well, why doesn't it have a built-in sound card? It's just because they didn't put one in it. Yeah. Yeah, probably because it's a portable have a radio. Either. It's not yeah. portable. I'm going to die on that one. It's not portable. You can. Go portable with it, but it is a mobile radio. Oh, mobile. Okay, mobile, right. Since we're I was arguing, trying to find when the 991A but at least, was But I argue I know released. Released. Well, what's the difference between portable and mobile? I would consider it portable and mobile. Nothing. So portable radios generally have lower power consumption because they're supposed to be operated off of battery power. Mobile radios are supposed to go in your car, so who cares about power consumption because you're creating power. Mm -hmm. All the power you mm -hmm. need. I don't know. It's, it doesn't have that much power consumption. If, if I did a lot of soda or poda, SSB, I'd probably have an 891. It's a good radio for that. Yeah. Well, really, you, have, you, really have you have 100 watts out. You don't necessarily need the waterfall because you're the one calling, right? Um, it seems that that would be the way to go. That's, that's right, Phil. Hmm. Finish him. And there we go with Matt's got some. some well, let me rephrase there. then. Any decent radio has a sound card. I, I will don't. not disagree with that. Well, hold on a second. My last. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Nope. I've TX500 <laughs> doesn't have one. Right, and it's TX500 is an awesome radio, by the that's, way. But that only that only that's only true if you care about FT8. So, seriously, I mean, or in the digital modes. I don't. Well, it de it depends on what you want to do, and uh, I can do them. And you could still do it, just harder. 
Wait, wait, Dave. Dave, we're not on topic right now. I'm sorry. I can't take your question at this moment. <laughs> so Dave in Temecula is asking, where do we install choke at the radio? He's heard different schools of thoughts. The official answer is, is that you should have one every quarter wavelength along your transmission line for the lowest band that you want to operate you're operating on. Yeah. Um, that seems like a pain in the ass. So what I do is I, at a minimum, have one at the back of my antenna tuner. And then I typically have one at my antenna feed point. Right. So I, I would have two in line for any antenna system. Um, now, that's just the RFI choke on my antenna tr on my transmission line. I have an RF choke on the power cable for my Raspberry Pi and the USB cable for my Raspberry Pi because I've noticed that I can get interference from the Raspberry right. Pi into my radio. And I can also, when transmitting, get interference from the radio into my Raspberry Pi. So I choke all that out. Yeah. And I also have a uh, what, what I was what I called a power choke, uh, the power line that goes from the back of my 7300 into my MFJ power strip. That has a, uh, a wrapped toroid on it as well. So pretty much any wire that I have coming in or out right. of my radios get, gets one. Wall warts would be something that would be suspect. Also, yep, for sure. a lot of noise. So you they can get bad. super technical. Also, we were talking about counterpoise, counterpie earlier in the show. Counterpie. And if you have an NFED half wave, cover, I don't know, 40 meters as an example, and you have 30 feet of coax, put the choke at the 30 foot mark on the coax away from the feed point of the antenna and then continue your coax to your radio. And then now you have your counterpoise. It's kind of an expensive counterpoise, but, you know, you've got yeah. one. Yeah. But that's you a can also do, that's a janky you can also counterpoise do, too. Do what? Oh, I'm, not Ape, I'm saying it's janky, janky counterpoise. So you, yeah. what about coiling your feed line? So you can coil your, your feed truck. line, and, and you have a lot of people are like, you get yourself an ugly bound and boy, put a ugly, wrap, wrap a couple. There's a there's a formula that you need to apply to how many wraps, how big how big the coils are, the type of coaxial cable, and the frequency that you want to choke out. So they tend to be very very narrow banded. I'm going to bet that most hams who do this and say that it makes a difference are full of shit because the thing is, is that unless they're out there with a protractor and all that other stuff and doing the formula, it, 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 the likelihood of it actually impeding. Doing anything positive. Right, right. Yeah. I did for it's my two meter kind of Yaggies. So you're and saying for it's, my six meter. Yeah, it's yeah. really common to see on, on UHF and VHF four directional antennas is where I've seen it with most success. But it's very band specific. So and it's very, very, very narrow banded too. Okay. And they'll give you a, a size to wrap it and how many wraps. Right. So they kind of done the formula for yeah. you. And too many wraps will mess up your SWR. Yeah, so I mean you, you really have to know what you're doing um, when when you do that. It, it, unless you have, you know, good solid instructions for, for the for that particular antenna installation. Right. But doing that on something like a DX commander. You know, with six bands on it, it's not really going to be. No, worth. no, it's not at all. Probably going to shoot your own foot off with that is what you're going right. to do. Yeah. Oh, my God, Liberty Cave. Oh, my God. ABC, son, always be choking, always be counterpoison. I mean, right. I say, always B, B, C, choking, always right. be choking. Really disappointing day to hear that, Liberty Cave. Well, he's in Oregon. You know, mm. 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 it's a little mm. wet out there this morning. <laughs> He's got how is ground. it? How is it out there? Are they getting uh, we're talking, they're talking about like a massive ice storm in Texas, too. Um, again, the weather seems like it's gonna be crazy. Walt rolled up in here, he's getting all choked up watching this. <laughs> he was uh, he was posting uh, early, earlier today, too. Walt's got a new video out where he talks about the ham shaming that goes on. I, and, I watched, uh, I watched half of it and then I had to go eat dinner. A Walt I think was a guest on another on another show the other night. I have to. We're have to not going to hold that against him personally. But, I hope uh, he's gotten his shots. That's all right. I'm saying. Okay. He was on the uh, on the clubhouse and a uh, booster because there's like two boosters after the main shot. Yeah, only two. I must have made him mad. They don't ask me no more. So. <laughs> I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> there's there's a really really bad joke in there, but I'm not going to say it because I I have a little tiny bit of respect left for those guys. Well, Joe Brett's it, here too. So do we will we'll be nice. Well, I'll be dipped. So anyhow, NRD saying it would change his TX frequency and change the settings on his waterfall until he choked it. 
Well, I'll be so that's something else, but I don't know what he's talking about there. Need some context there, NRD. Well, you may be seeing <laughs> or or we don't. Extra stuff. <laughs> that could go either way. <laughs> Don's calling me out for ham shaming Liberty Cave. Don okay. is calling you out for ham shaming. Yeah. Don loves to ham shame everyone with an icon. <laughs> oh, hey, Bald! Congrats on the upgrade. Look at this. Where, where did it go? Did he Walter. pass it? He passed. He's All been an right. extra for forty-five whole minutes now. Look at that. K four O G O stroke A E. Right, we had he got that just in time. He's he's about to pack up and go back over uh, to Poland. Does that mean you can take over Polish state television now or something? If you're an extra and you're in Poland, does that give you any more privileges in Poland? Is really my legitimate question. Well, the thing is, when you travel overseas, you're always looking forward to some kind of food or meal that you can eat when you get there. Nah, I want a ham. Pierogi. Like when you, when I you want go pierogi. to when you go to Poland, like what, I mean, I'd be like the, the way they boil cabbage in Poland is pierogi. fantastic. Pierogi, <laughs> vodka, sausage. Vodka, yeah. sausage. Vodka. Like, what is that? A kielbasa and and, uh, and boiled boiled cabbage? It'd be a kielbasa. Do? I could Kiel, skip the kielbasa, but uh, yeah, kielbasa is awesome. awesome. Ain't you never been to a county fair? Kiel, they... Kielbasi, as they say in Baltimore. We're just gonna Here add a go. whole bunch of syllables that Cultural don't exist. Desert. Some kielbasi. Um, I I don't. I've never been to the Polish festival. I have been at the festival where they have Polish kibasa, where you can get a kibasa or something like that. But um, I don't necessarily know if I want that. I did not like kielbasa when I was a kid, and now I like it. I love it. I've uh, always loved I, it. I don't really like it, but I, I like I like an just Italian my mom's sausage. Cooking. And uh, I like it. Well, my mom sausage. would just take it a kielbasa and throw it in the pot with a p p chunk of cabbage and you, boil the hell out of it. Oh, you don't God, boil okay, sausage. No, that's no. wrong. Mm -mm, that's like yeah, Russian or something. Mm -mm. That's but like Soviet like... style cooking. No kapusta. So you got nothing else. Yeah, we now we grew up eating something <laughs> called liver, uh, brown schweiger. So yeah, I did from too. From Oscar Mayer. Cherry liver sausage. Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah, I knew it was cherry, liver sausage. It's, it's I liver sausage with later. cherry flavoring. It's good stuff. Well, what's the difference between brown brown swagger and and liverwurst? <laughs> I thought. Yeah, I thought it was. <laughs> one of them's got a little more swagger than the other one does. <laughs> when I was a kid, man, I loved that stuff. I would never even think about eating it now. I would do hey, right, a multicolor ladies. yawn if right? I, you know, if I had that. That's how I feel about bologna. Oh man, bologna's awesome. I know. <laughs> the car cookbook right, will be huh? out when. That's right. <laughs> We, that, that's the whole reason for the Nom Nom channel. We've been, you know, stealing recipes for the last couple of years. We had a plan. I, got, yeah. I don't, I don't uh, post it Nom Nom. Scrapple. Scrapple is We have good. no, 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 I have never had motor. Scrapple as many times as I've been up to Baltimore. I never cool. tried Scrapple. It's fantastic. Scrapple. And down in the south, like where my grandma was from, they call it pudding. They'd be like, You want some pudding? Yeah. Um, Shaky pudding. What is Scrapple good. for those of us who are not from Bomber? It's everything Lit that's left says. over. It's it's it's, it's ta tails and peckers. It's everything that's left over after making sausage. It's the scrap of the pig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought that was true. So it's like bologna. Hoof. No, it's better than bologna. Yeah. There's hooves and lips and ears. It's good stuff. It is good though. It's good for hangovers. Now I forgot what I was saying. Damn. Couldn't have. You're couldn't saying have been. this has been a great show. And we appreciate everything. Well, oh, damn, I didn't realize the time. Look at that. It, went flying. Yeah, it, it has been a great show. Um, thanks, guys, for being here. Thanks for sharing Quartz Fest with us, Chuck, and time flies re re reluctantly time. sharing your flex with us, James. Um, and thanks, everybody, in the chat. It was uh, it was awesome, and I appreciate uh, all the interaction and comments and questions. And with that, I'm going to push the button, and then thanks I'm going to awkwardly wait 